Chris. Hi, this is Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. What do you want, Chris? Well, it is just that, just that. I really like your League Starter videos. Could you please do one for Blight League? What's in it for me? Please, please. I'll increase the amount of exalts that drop for your account throughout the league. I'll do it. What's up guys, Lifting here. With Blight League right around the corner, it is once again time to abandon any real life responsibilities and escape into the greedy but I guess wonderful world that is Ray Classed. In this video I'm going to present 5 great league starters for Path of Exile's 3.8 Blight League. All of these builds fit the requirements of being easy to level, having a low cost requirement and they use solid, tried and tested skills so you don't end up in a situation being disappointed with a build that turned out not to work as well as you thought it would. If you enjoy this type of content, then please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and ring that bell icon for future videos. And if you wish to support me in a bit more personal way, then consider becoming a Patreon on patreon.com or a member on this channel. Thank you. Let's get into it. The first build on this week's list is a melee build that can be played in many different variations by Lochek. If you know you'd like to play an attack based melee build, but aren't entirely sure of which skill to go with then Lochek's build might be worth looking into. With this you can use multiple skills with the same setup. This includes the hard hitting and channel based blade flurry and cyclone, or the pseudo melee lacerate and reef skills, or you could even give the relatively new and popular blade storm skill a go with this setup. No matter what you choose, the core design of this build can accommodate each skill with only a few build differences between them all. The build can be run as the gladiator or the champion ascendancy. Both are good picks, with the gladiator you will benefit from the powerful bleed explosions and bleed damage this ascendancy provides and as the champion you will comparatively be able to reach better overall defenses and boss killing potential for late game, although at the cost of being slightly slower. For a more thorough explanation of the pros and cons of each ascendancy you can read more in Lochek's guide. The build is designed around evasion as its core defensive mechanic, but due to the interaction of the Dreamfeather Swords that this build dual wields, your evasion also acts as a way of increasing your offensive capabilities by granting you an increased attack damage bonus relative to the amount of evasion you have. Furthermore, the build incorporates the perfect form, chest armor, and with this any extra cold resistance is above the soft cap additionally scales the amount of evasion rating your character has. It also adds face acrobatics, granting 30% chance to dodge spell damage and reduces the mana cost of Arctigama by 100%, basically allowing you to enable this defensive ability for free. If you're looking for a fast paced build with multiple choices of skills to pick from, then Lochank's build might just be for you. Build number 2 on this week's list is a mass summoner build by Herkanic. If you haven't kept up on recent balance and league changes, it is probably worth knowing that summoners in general have received major buffs and skill overhauls, of which there are way too many for me to cover in detail in this video. However, generally speaking, most minion based skills have been buffed in one way or the other, and the Necromancer Ascendancy by itself has been completely reworked with powerful new ways of scaling your minions. In case you're interested, I have a video specifically covering the changes to the new Necromancer that you can find a link to below in the description. The bottom line is, if you like summoners in that type of playstyle or haven't tried one yet, now is a really good time to do it. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here either when calling this a mass minion build. Let me quote a part of Herkanic's guide here. This summoner build freezes, poisons, bleeds, blinds, maims, hinders, taunts, generates frenzy charges for allies, curses, lowers resist, gains life on hit from attacks and spells, knocks back and teleports all as one action and is assisted by two frost sentinels, a solar guard, an agony crawler, 11 phantasms, 8 zombies, a holy relic, 10 skeletons and 40 wall skeletons. The goal of this build are to field as many minions with as many supports as possible, push summoner DPS to new heights while remaining tanky, be adaptable and play fast, smoothly and with minimal fuss. 
Of noteworthy gear, the build feature items such as the Belly of the Beast chest armor, the Victorious Charity Shield, the Blood Grip Amulet, and the Mark of Submission Ring. I've featured this build before and I'm happy to do so again. Herkanik has the single best written forum guide I've ever seen and he puts in a lot of effort to ensure it is updated and primed for potential upcoming balance and lead changes. And it's not just that, I really believe that Herkanik's Necromancer build is amongst the best heavy minion focused summoner builds one can play at the moment. Coming up third on the list is a Cleave and Bladestorm duelist by Captain Warlord. Some of you may have seen it before when browsing the forums where it goes by Hank the Tank, as it has been a stable and reliable build that has been available to the community for a long while. Besides being absolutely mainly and a true magnet, it is also one of those builds that can be played with multiple different skills as long as the support gems and some minor tree changes are accommodated. That said, the Hank the Tank build is primarily focused around the Cleave and Bladestorm skill as previously mentioned. With this setup, you'll become a defensive powerhouse that is able to dish out more than enough damage for any content the game currently offers. The build is played as the champion, because what woman doesn't like a champion? But other benefits such as permanent fortify, a higher chance to impale, the women love that too. And increased effect of banners with no extra cost. With this you'll be picking up the Iron Reflexes Keystone to convert all your evasion rating into armor, the Resolute Technique Keystone to ensure you never miss, and Crimson Danes to allow you to stack up to 8 bleed effects at the same target. And to put this into perspective, imagine how annoying your wife is with just one bleed effect going on. Of noteworthy items, the build features the Crescian's Carapace Chest Armor, the Thief's Torment and the Forbidden Taste Flask, if you want to be popular with the ladies, increase your chance to impale and tanky enough to withstand the forces of Rayclast, then hang the tank, it is for you. The fourth build on the list is by Mika Tusalo. While golems in general have received some minor buffs, many of the benefits in 3.8 are to be found via the changes to the Necromancer and new skill tree notes. Mika's build can be played as either the Necromancer but also the Elementalist, if that is what you prefer. Each ascendancy offers its own unique build style, of which you can read more about in the guide. With this build you'll be able to get an effective level 28 flame golem skill for some serious damage alongside three vanguard specters that the build also features for extra boss damage. And besides, this is also a very tanky build that when factoring in the various defensive mechanics can reach up to around 10,000 effective health. The build is also very beginner friendly and features both a budget and expensive version and should be able to accommodate almost any type of player as long as you enjoy minion builds. Of noteworthy gear, the build features items such as the Clay Shaper Mace for an extra golem, the Victoria Shield to generate and spread frenzy charges for your minions, the skin of the Loyal Chest Armor, a presence of Cheyula Amulet and of course the various golem specific jewels such as the Animus Stone, Primordial Might and Primordial Harmony. Some of these items can be expensive in the beginning of the league, but as I said, Mika's got you covered with a budget solution until you can afford these later. So if you want to play something a little different than most, then give this a go. The fifth and perhaps last build of this week's list is a Fire and Flamethrower Trap Shadow build by Souls of Black. Rather than regularly attacking or casting spells, this build, as you probably guessed, is designed around the Trap Archetype, the Saboteur, which together with the Necromancer, Radar and Assassin also received some changes to its ascendancy design this league. Some of these changes were better than others, but the Saboteur overall remains a solid ascendancy that with this type of setup can dish out a great amount of damage while maintaining solid defensive capabilities strong enough to deal with any type the game gets to throw at you. And in Path of Exiles 3.8 Blight League, the Fire Trap skill has yet again received another buff for some reason, despite it already being a strong skill to begin with. Fortunately, that just means that people who enjoyed the skill before are probably going to enjoy it even more. The base damage of the Fire Trap was increased rather substantially together with a notable area of effect buff too. Soul Spilt, when played optimally, can deliver some solid single target that makes most boss encounters rather easy to deal with, and with a bit of efficiency training and Adderall, it also offers decent map clear speed. 
Of note were the items Soul Spelt feature the Combs Heart Chest Armor, the Slave Driver's Hand Gloves, and then as a surprise to most people, a bow and quiver. Now this is not necessary if you prefer differently, but as it often is with bows, you can get the plus two level gem affixes rather easily on this type of item. And like many other skills, many traps also greatly benefit from this. So if traps are your thing, check out Soul Spilt. And now for the bonus build. This one is a Frostblades Ranger build by Fiverr. I'm personally of the opinion that Frostblades is currently amongst the top three melee skills you can play in Path of Exile at the moment. It offers great clear speed and due to the massive amounts of power creep that this game has suffered slash benefited from depending on your viewpoint, what used to be a poor single target skill simply isn't true anymore, as long as it is built correct that is. Before 3.8 I was actually working on my own Frostblades build to have released to you guys, but then I think I saw a squirrel and fortunately for you, Fiverr has a great Frostblades guide you guys can check out instead. It is played as the recently buffed Raider, which for this setup means more speed, more damage and more evasion rating. Nice. And speaking of buffs, it isn't only the Ascendancy class that has been improved, but the build also benefits from the new multi-strike gem that deals slightly more damage and has a lower mana requirement, making it easier to sustain the skill that it supports. Of noteworthy gear, Fiverr's build feature items such as the Dark Grey Vector Boots for that extra frenzy charge, the Pandemonious Amulet to further reduce the enemy's cold resist with the potential of being able to blind when you hit, the Mark of the Elder Ring for a solid damage boost and either the Staconia set or a Business Helmet depending on your own personal preference. I tell you guys, you can't go wrong with Frostblades in its current state, so if you end up panicking and still don't know what to roll 30 minutes before leak start, then just go Frostblades. Do it. Alright, bonus build 2 and 3. Alright, so it always feels a bit abrasive to promote my own builds in these videos, but if I don't, people always ask me later why I didn't, and they worry it's because they won't be viable for this leak. Good news for you guys, because the Ancestral Warchief Totem Champion, Uberlap Farmer, and Frostbolt Totem Hierophant are more than viable for the upcoming 3.8 changes and if you're looking for a build that either farms uberlap very easily or a build that despite using totems has great map clear speed then the ancestral warchief totem champion and frostbolt totem hierophants got you covered both are very easy to start they are obviously very budget friendly as most league starters should be and they are excellent choices for anyone who's new to the game as the progression of each belt doesn't require a lot of fiddling around with various obscure mechanics that might otherwise get you confused. As a matter of fact, I've been recommending these two guides to new players for a few years now and from feedback I know that the by far majority of people that try these builds end up having a good time with them. If you still haven't tried uberlapping as a way of generating currency, I'd also recommend you at least give it a try. It is one of my favorite aspects of the game and while many seem to dislike the labyrinth, that often has something to do with players haven't spent enough time to figure out how to do it optimally. Once you've been uberlapping for a few weeks, you're never going to have to worry about running a labyrinth again, as you will know exactly what to expect and what to do to make it a simple, easy and quick reference. And the loot explosions in there are just so ever satisfying. Patreons, you're the best. Thank you very much for your support. Did you enjoy the video? Do you want to see more? Then please click that like button and the subscribe button because on next Friday, Saturday, I will be releasing a similar video to this with many more builds for you guys to get inspired from. If you're looking for help figuring out what build to play or need someone to take a look at your build and suggest improvements or upgrades, then visit my Discord at discord.gg lifting and ask the PoE tutors for help in the PoE help section. Have a great league start everyone, thank you for watching, and bros, do you even nerd?